What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'm gonna be making four new replacement bolts for the Arbor Press cover plate. So these bolts, I have two that are original that are square head and two that someone replaced at some point with traditional hex head bolts. I could easily go out and purchase new bolts or just reuse these, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, but in keeping with the theme of the project, I thought it would be fun to make four new bolts out of stainless steel over on the blue lathe. All right, so the material we're gonna be using for this job is stainless steel. You could make these bolts out of anything, but I do like using stainless because it's not gonna rust and it leaves a decent surface finish even though it's a little difficult to machine. And I'm making it out of an unknown piece of stainless, which isn't recommended. Um, but it is what I have on hand, it's the right size, and frankly, I don't want to spend uh, the money to make these nuts. It's not really worth it. Um, I'd rather just use something I have on the shelf. So uh, let me bring you around and show you the tailstock support that I'm using, so that way this piece isn't flapping around in the back. I know some people are going to get a kick out of this, saying that it doesn't work or that it's a terrible idea. and they're partially right and they're partially wrong. Um, I came up with this idea, I don't know. I thought it would be good to do a spider on the back, but I just never got to it and I had a steady and I thought, hey, maybe I can repurpose the steady. And so like in this case, this bar is hanging out the back. Um, it's pretty rigid being a thick. It would be mostly fine at lower RPMs, but it'll chatter around and be obnoxious. So I have the steady mounted here and I have the brass feelers, so I'll just adjust that and then I'll put some lube on there and that'll actually keep it from rattling around and it works quite well. Where this doesn't work great is this mount, even though it is bolted to the floor, it's not the most rigid. So if you have something super long or you have something really heavy, uh, you know, there's a limitation on how good it is, but it is better than nothing and it is good enough. And this is what it looks like at 1700 RPM. See, completely fine. That's faster than I'm gonna be running it, but you get the idea. Works as intended. All right guys, the first step here is just to get the stainless faced off. We're gonna be using this DDJNR uh, tool holder. I really like this design. Uh, it's very robust and it has a nice point which gives a good surface finish. In case you're curious, here are the inserts, DNMG 431s. Um, it's ISCAR, but uh, the brand, I'm sure there's one of all different kinds that are very similar. So let's get this faced off. We're running 1200 RPM. We'll touch off. And just get that guy faced. All right, we'll zero our Y axis and we're doing a, a bolt here that's 5 eighths, so that's 0.625 in diameter for the external threads. Now just from experience uh, cutting external threads, I tend to find that going about 5 thousandths undersized just helps uh, the bolt fit. So 625 will be 620 and then we're gonna come back I think it was an inch, inch and a half. We got our scale rule here. Yeah, inch and a half. So we'll come back inch and a half and get us get our blank roughed out. Touch off. And we're just gonna set. And this is inch and an eighth, so 1.125. And I'm just gonna confirm that. Yep, it's actually right on. Perfect. Let me just see what our feed's looking like. It's a little fast, but we might get a good, might get a good surface finish. Let's touch off, 125. And then we're gonna take 50 thousandths. All 
All right, that's gonna get us a nice surface finish, but it's a little fast for my liking, so I'm gonna step it down. We're running, looks like 12 thousandths feed rate here, so we're doing a 7 thousandths. We'll try that. And we'll take 100 thousandths off. Oh, look at that, looks nice, looks real nice. Chip control is decent, it's not amazing, but it's, it's good. Surface finish, I can't complain, looks good. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and get that roughed out. It says we're at 986, I'm just gonna double check the DRO. 993, okay, so we're about 10 thousands off, that's fine. We'll take it down, another 100 thou. A little bit of chatter on that last one. I think I was going a little bit too deep and we're losing a little bit of rigidity out here, but that's fine. We're gonna make a cleanup pass. We're getting down to our diameter there. Use our stare at 216 here just to check. Looks like we're at 665. All right, so we got 45 thousandths to come off there. We're gonna take it in two passes of about 22, 23 and go from there. Touch off. I'm gonna come in 23 and see how it goes. It says we took off 24 thousandths. I'm gonna slow the feed down actually so we can get a little better service finish. So we should have about 20 thousandths to go. We're looking at 637. About 27 thousandths to go, and it is a little warm. So I'm gonna go, not crazy hot, I'm gonna go a one thousandths over. So that way if it shrinks a little bit, we're good. So we're gonna take 26 off. It's gonna finish out the cut. All right, surface finish isn't bad. We were getting some stringing there just because we're not uh, moving quick enough or at a heavy depth enough cut to break the chip, but that's fine. All right, so we're shooting for 620. Let's see how close we are. All right, 620, we're right on. Perfect. There it is. Probably 621 and 9 tenths, but close enough. We'll come in here and do our chamfer. There we go. I wanted to bring you along and show you how I'm working the dials on the lathe. Now I'm going to be the first to admit that when you're cutting threads, there's a bunch of people that are very passionate about the right way to do it. And let me tell you, there's many ways to do it. If I'm being honest, most times when I'm cutting small threads on softer materials, I just cut it over here with the top slide and it works out perfectly fine. It's less stuff you have to deal with and it works great. But the traditional method is to use the compound. And the benefits in doing that are that it allows you to have a little bit more precise control. And also the tool pressure is coming in at an angle as opposed to coming in straight. And that's better on harder materials and on bigger parts that's kind of magnified. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now I do have this set to my zero here. And when I have it set to zero, the way I'm doing this job, that is gonna be when I'm at full depth of the tool and same thing on the uh, compound. So when I'm gonna be cutting with the compound, I'm gonna be coming in this direction and I know, hey, when I'm at like 90, 95, I'm getting close, I'm gonna check it and then make my last couple cuts, hopefully somewhere in this region here. And then this at the zero just allows me to pull out quickly and then I can come right back to zero and then finish making my cuts over here. So hopefully that helps you understand the technique we're using. Now let's come back around to the other side so we can make these cuts. Now for our threading operation, we're just gonna blue this up. All 
All right, we're getting ready to get this threaded. I went ahead and blued it up so we can see where our scratch pass is. We're gonna be using this NASR threading tool. It's a top-notch threading tool, and it's a number two size. Uh, the insert's just a basic grade here, and I think I got my uh, thread set up correctly, so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna take a scratch pass. Before we do that, I'm just gonna make a little mark back here where I wanna release my threads. There we go. All right, so we set our thread depth at minus 112 thousandths. 112 thousandths is the depth of both sides, so it's 56 thousandths deep is how deep we're gonna be cutting to get our final thread dimension. Once we get close, we'll check it and go from there. So we'll take a scratch pass and see how we look. And I'm just going on a number one. And we'll take our thread pitch gauge and we'll check it and we should be at 5 8 11. Always double check this. Checking our thread pitch. And it looks spot on, so that looks good. All right, now we're gonna make our cuts using the compound. Here we go. I'm gonna zero off my top slide, and I'm gonna come in another couple thousandths, and here we go. There we go, there's the first pass. Come back into zero, dial in a couple more, Wait for the number to come around. Engage. Release back out. Here we go, half nut engagement. Half knot disengagement and back out. More on the compound. Half nut engagement. Disengagement and back out. We're just taking about 5 thousandths of pass. All right, we're within about 5 thousandths. We're gonna check it with a nut. All right, we got a typical hardware nut over here. We're gonna check it. Now, this isn't high precision. I know the threads in that casting are 100 years old, so a regular nut will work. Otherwise, we'd use a no-go gauge or something. Perfect, so it goes on, but it gets tight. That means I didn't overcut it. So we're gonna just take two thousandths at a time, and then we'll get down to one thousandths passes and spring passes from there. All right, taking two thousandths. Didn't look like two thousandths. Let's check it. All right, good. That was close. We're gonna take a spring pass. It's two thousandths on the dial, but there may have been a little backlash involved, so. We're, it's good, we're still not too tight. All right, that was a spring pass there. That feels good, it's getting a little tight there. Took another one thousandths. That's it. A little snug, but as long as I can turn it by hand, I'm happy with that. Perfect. Great. We'll get it cleaned up with a wire brush. And just to show you where we finished on the dial, so we're right there. So that looks like that was three thousandths away from our zero point. That's totally fine. 
at least I knew that I was getting close and I started checking it over here. Sometimes it'll be, you know, five thousandths either way. It just depends on tool pressure, but this just gives you a good gauge so you can know when you're getting close. So it would be different if we were like 20 thousandths either way, but we were really close to the zero. So that's why doing it this way is really nice. Next, we're just gonna take 20 thousandths out of the outer diameter just to clean it up and make it look nice for our flanged nut section. 1200 RPMs, touch off and take 20. We'll come in here and just put a slight chamfer on this. There it is. All right, we're gonna get this parted off and take it over to the mill so we can cut the wrench flats. Before we do that, we're just gonna blue it up. Now we're gonna make the head 750 thousandths thick. So we're just gonna touch our tool off here. All right, zero it off, back it out, bring it over 120 thousandths, which is the depth of the tool. Zero it out, we'll do 750 thousandths, and then we're gonna do an extra 10 thousandths so we can clean it up. So let's part this off. Turn our RPM down and use some cutting fluid. We're using an ISCAR insert, TGFH. There she is. All right, we're gonna take it over to the mill and cut the wrench flats. All right, we're over here in the mill and let's talk about our setup before we make this cut. So I'm using an eight inch USA super spacer. All right, I got this at an auction and I just got it cleaned up. It does have some soft jaws in here. They are a flat face, so they shouldn't damage the threads. Um, and we're gonna be making a hex so that's gonna be six rotations, 60 degrees each. Um, and for this, we're gonna to touch off and we're gonna come down 500 thousandths um, plus an additional 25 thousandths, which we left for the facing cut. And that'll leave us a quarter inch uh, spacer, so to speak, at the bottom. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna make a cut of 179 and a half thousandths per side, um, which when you measure across the flats, is gonna equal 359 thousandths, which will give us a 750 uh, thousandths or a three quarter inch bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those measurements and we're gonna step it back a couple thousandths and then get everything roughed in, check it with a wrench, uh, check it with the micrometer, and then we'll come in here and do our cleanup cuts and get it dialed in. As far as cutters, we're gonna be using a ball nose end mill to get a nice radius here. It's a 3 8 solid carbide. Um, it's not the best condition one. Ideally, I would be using something that's maybe quarter inch, get a tighter radius, but it is what it is. Uh, should work just fine. All right, let's get the mill started. We're gonna be running 1200 RPM. And the first step is just gonna to be to touch off so we can get a zero. There we go, there's our first chips. Let me zero the Z axis, come off the edge. We're gonna come up our 525 and then lock the knee. We're gonna touch off, all right? So we can zero. And the cutter is spinning in this direction. So in order to do some conventional milling, we need to feed back into the cutter. So if we were feeding in this direction, we'd be feeding in the same direction as the cutter. So we're just gonna get our zero back to zero. And remember, we need to do 179 thousandths over. We're gonna do maybe 30 or 40 thousandths passes and see how we go. We're gonna feed over, let's just try 40 thousandths. This is carbide, should be fine. We're gonna lock that axis. Now 
Not too bad. Radius looks good. All right, that was 100. Now we're gonna rotate it around 60 degrees. All right, and lock it down. And then we're gonna do another 100 thousandths. And we're gonna keep repeating that process. Loosen. Making our last cut here. Taking a hundred thousandths roughly. All right, now that we've made a full circle, we're gonna come in here and measure, see where we're at. Looks like we are at 892. Come over to my calculator here. See 892 minus 750, which is our target, leaves us 142 in total. Divided by two means that we need to do 71 thousandths additional. I'm gonna do 68. We'll take it around the perimeter. We'll double check our measurements and then we'll do our finish cuts and test with the wrench. I think this needs to be undersized a couple thou anyway, um, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. All right, here's a little bit of a wider shot showing you what we're doing. Again, 1200 RPMs, taking another like 60 thousandths. We got our table locked. Let's, let's bring it back around to zero. We're gonna lock it in, put our secondary lock on. And again, this isn't the finished pass, but take our last 70 thousandths. Gives us an idea of what our radius is gonna look like. Looks nice. Loosen. We're gonna advance to 60. And on this spacer, it falls in there, so it's real easy to not mess up. One twenty locks in. One eighty locks in. Two forty. And then this will be our last cut at 300. Box in. All right, we should be a couple thousandths away from 750. Let's see where we're at. Perfect, 755 about. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off four thousandths. That'll give us three thousandths undersized from 750. I think that'll be fine. A, a tighter fit, but I think that'll be good. Well guys, I changed my mind. Instead of using that ball radius to mill, 
I'm gonna actually use a straight mill. I think I'm gonna get a better surface finish and I think the square bottom's gonna look a little bit nicer. So let's come in here with this brand new four flute end mill and just clean up three thousandths on either side and then we'll take it over to the lathe to get it finished out. It's the same size, three eighths. All right, here we go. All right, let me rotate it around. to clean up some of the roughing marks. Well guys, that turned out pretty good. Let's take it over to the lathe and get it finished out. All right, we got the material chucked back in the lathe. Seems to be running pretty true. We're gonna come in and uh, clean up the face and uh, chamfer everything and go from there. Just gonna touch off. It's gonna take about 25 thousandths. All right. Now we're gonna come in here and chamfer the ends. Our last operation is gonna to be to put some flats on the corners here. So we're just gonna come in, touch off, take a little bit off, come all the way over and face out. I think that is her. Let me just hit it with some emery paper. i just go in reverse. And then I think I'm gonna chamfer the back a little bit more and chamfer the front a little bit more. Let's do the front first. Well, here we are guys, right off the lathe in the mill, no polishing, I actually don't have a buffer anymore. Turned out really good. 
We're just gonna make three more of these and we'll meet you back at the bench. All right guys, we're back over at the bench and we got all four bolts done. They turned out absolutely beautiful. It did take me a minute to dial the speeds and feeds in so I could get a really nice surface finish and pick the correct insert. But overall, I'm very happy with how they turned out. Yes, you could go to the store or go on McMaster Car and order some bolts, but they're just not gonna be this good. Um, and it was a ton of fun making these. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.